Hey guys, I'm Shrey and I work on the product at Requestly. So, um, I started at Requestly a couple of years back as a contributor and then eventually like pivoted to product and I'm currently leading the product at Requestly. So today I'll be sharing how a particular set of users started using Requestly in a way it was not intended to and then we eventually led a new product line to be developed. So yeah, a quick background. So Requestly is a HTTP interceptor. It's an open source alternative to Charles proxy. It helps you modify headers, override responses, redirect across environments. And it is mainly used by front-end folks. Sometime soon we realized that a lot of QA engineers had started using the tool and they were mainly keeping Requestly on having all the logs recorded and reported bugs using at attaching the HAR files in their linear tickets. So a sample linear ticket of how things look like, they would give a very brief of what the bug was, what was the expected result, and then they would attach this file. The, uh, the intent behind this file was that it will help the devs notice as to what the discrepancies are, and seeing the discrepancies, they would be able to gauge as to where the problem lies. But since a lot of people were doing this, it was not expected to us. We started to dive deeper as to what are the clear expectations of the people and we wanted to give the best solution to the people. So identifying the challenges, we realized that the current processes are a lot manual. People required downloading logs. It, and again, after downloading logs, they had to write detailed descriptions. It missed reproduction steps. Console errors were not there and people were looking forward to environment specific details, all of which had to be done manually. And even with all of these details, there were often people asking for storage and cache data because it was a state data and people wanted to know about the current state variables and other things in order to debug better. So this led us to reimagine how a perfect modern day bug report would look like. And we fixated upon two particular problems. We realized that a perfect bug report should be extremely seamless and quick to create. Because for a product manager or a QA who is like dealing with bugs every day, like he tends to report tens of bugs each day. He cannot spend a lot of time on a particular bug just detailing that bug out. Also, on the end of the developers, they should be having all the context upfront so that this the least back and forth available. And seeing this, we realized that there's a potential of innovation here and we started to build session book. So session book is a single click bug report that has all the necessary context attached automatically. So reporters simply need to click a button and the entire report would be generated. So a quick demonstration of how the report would look like and how this like process is. So for example, I'm a QA working on a site and I see that the uh, page is not loading uh, as per the expectation, right? I'll click on requestly icon that is on the top left and I'll click on watch last five minutes. Simply clicking on watch last five minutes, I'll get a report of the entire previous five minutes, the, the user interactions, the console logs, the network logs, the, uh, the other details. And it's parallel to dash cam. What dash cam does for cars, you hit an accident, you just get a record of what all happened. Similarly, uh, we, are, we are sort of building the dash cam for the web. Now, here is the most exciting bit, right? Why is this developer friendly? So you get all the details. You can, you need not uh, focus on the, repro uh, the, the steps to reproduce anymore because you know what sort of actions did the user took. The entire video captures all of it. You also have network console logs. You can just refer through the console logs, see if there are any console headers. You also get a detail of the local storage and the cache data, which is very important to manage state data. Further, if you have identified any particular bug, you can simply edit and replay it within Requestly. So we realized that bug reporting was a lot difficult and had a lot of hassles across multiple channels. And with session book, we tried to simplify that and the process is no longer that stiff. In terms of customizations, we offer a lot of customizations in session bear. You can choose what to share. You can only share the recording, the, the video part, or you can share the console and the network errors also. It totally depends on the particular use case you're um, like 
recording the session for. Further, you can also choose how to share. You can report the bugs via an online link. You can also download the entire session to be shared offline. Further, we are also exploring a couple of bits around self-hosted sessions, wherein we'll be storing the sessions in the database of the uh, companies or the enterprises itself. Quickly about the tech behind session book. So it's a browser extension. The browser extension injects our JavaScript SDK onto the page, right? And we are using RR web. So for anybody who's interested in record and replay, RR web is the go-to thing. A lot of popular projects right now are using RR web. So RR web instance is initiated to capture the HTML snapshots of the DOM. This DOM is then dumped into the local storage as a variable. And whenever you, rip, uh, like you find a bug, we present this beautifully in an iframe. Since we are very close to the user's network data, security is an important factor and everything remains local unless and until spe specifically like hosted online. Even on when online, it's on Firebase. We do not save any, inf uh, any sensitive information, including authorization or tokens and etc. Even though it's a feature, it's behind a feature flag that the user can configure. If they're reporting internally, they can actually like uh, share the authorization headers, etc. Further, we are also working towards SOC2 compliance and we are anyways open source. Now, since again, we are very close to the user's network sessions, it's very important to build trust and being open source really helps. I cannot emphasize on the number of times we have actually bypassed security questionnaires just by saying that we are open source. In terms of community support and OSS friends, like we do sponsor projects, RRWeb, we are sponsoring RRWeb, plus we also receive sponsorships. OSS friends help each other and like let the community thrive. Further, because the code is open, it sort of ensures that it's a mindset among everyone who's working on the project that the code is open and anybody can see it. So we make sure that the product standard is really high. Also in terms of uh, crowdsourcing innovation, we are actually encouraging a lot of contributions. We have a lot of good first issues. I personally handle them. So even though we started small, but the open source bit, the crowdsourcing is actually gaining traction. Since the project is live for some time, we ha actually have some user feedback. The feedback is majorly on the lines that people are able to save time. It's very easy in terms of collaboration on their end. They are able to maintain bugs easily. In terms of the vision, how we see like uh, this growing, we want developers to focus on the core tasks and not bugs at most of the times. There was a study that we referred that where people are like spending close to 25% of their entire de uh, development time in actually debugging bugs. So we want devs to ship high quality software fast. And that's the aim with which we are working. So yeah, that was it. If anybody wants to try session, look at sample sessions, here's a QR, you can actually scan it. It will help you get started. Yeah, open for questions. We questions? are actually at a booth outside. So if anybody has any questions, any feedbacks, do give it a try and do let us know if you have any feedbacks or suggestions. Even questions, right? I'm here for questions. Hey, Sri. Uh, so it's a nice talk. Uh, I wish to ask as uh, sometimes uh, when we want to share our network logs, our console logs and local storage data, we want to give the other person a limited access to it. Yeah. Like I'm sharing it with a uh, some of my team members, but on the member level, I give them a limited access to what they can access in that data. So will it be possible? So for now, we mask the private information. That is for sure. We are uh, rolling out selective, like um, selective access. But for now, you can either decide whether the entire session would be available fully or like a part of the session. 
that level of customization we do not have for now so by doing so you mean i have to create separate links uh, uh, according yeah, to yeah that could data. be done that could uh, be done w- so we have a concept of workspaces you can actually create a session in a particular workspace and all the people in that particular workspace will have access to it by default okay all right thanks yeah